Hello and welcome everyone to the call. Uh, can you guys please confirm if I'm audible and visible to you through the chat box or by unmuting yourself? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Shreya. So, uh, okay, great, great. Thank you. So uh, we can begin the session. I, uh, I think the other participants may join in in between, but yeah. Okay, so we can start. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. Let me know when it's visible to you, okay? <clears throat> visible. Okay, great. All right, guys, so this is an orientation session for the audit and assurance paper. And uh, I'm not exactly sure as to where exactly are you guys in this, you know, ACCA journey as of now. So if you can, you know, please enlighten me about that, then I can, you know, proceed with, uh, yeah, Shreya, go ahead. Vish uh, hi, Vishnu, uh, how are you? Doing great, how are you? Okay, I'm good. Uh, actually, uh, right now I'm preparing for my skill papers. The first paper is a uh, PM. So mm -hmm. I'm not taking this paper. Like right now I'm not preparing for this. Okay. So how about that? You will be covering that part also or you will be sticking to this like audit and assurance? In this session, I'll be sticking to audit and assurance as of now. And I believe the PM orientation will be conducted in the next week as well. But, you know, uh, this is something that you will eventually take up so uh i will be talking about like things like uh you know what this paper is all about the syllabus content the exam structure how is it different from other papers as well as the study plan and everything like like that as well so should still should be beneficial for you as well <clears throat> sure, sure sure thank you and i have two more participants nk and divya can you guys like uh speak uh like speak by unmuting yourself or uh, you know, can you guys like uh, comment on the chat as well? <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, uh, no mind. But if you have any questions, then feel free to shoot that, shoot it in the chat box, or you can you know unmute yourself and uh, ask me about that as well. Okay. Now, uh, coming back to the slide. So first of all. What is the audit and assurance paper all about? Let's talk about that, shall we? So the audit and assurance paper is kind of different from the other skill level papers that we have in ACCA because uh, in the other skill level papers like PM, taxation, or FM, the question structure or the exam structure consists of MCQs or OTQs majorly like other sorry multiple choice questions or uh you know objective types of questions uh on a majority basis like for 60 marks etc and then there are like 40 marks worth of uh constructive response questions or case study questions as well but when it comes to the audit and assurance paper the structure is a bit different because around 70 marks within this particular paper is really is in relation to case study questions so if you ask me if this is a theory paper, I would say not really. It's more of a practical paper, as in there's not much calculation or anything involved here, but it's more like, uh, you know, you will be given a practical scenario and you have to act as a act as a auditor in that particular scenario. That's basically what this paper is all about. And it gives you the basic understanding as to what we do uh, in the audit field and, you know, what, what exactly do auditors do, what we, we talk about uh, the basic stuff as well as uh, a bit intermediate stuff as well. <clears throat> and of course, there's the, uh, the advanced stuff are, are basically something that you learn when it comes to the advanced level paper that is triply uh, advanced audit and assurance. But, you know, in this paper, I would say it, it's kind of really, uh, if you are, let's say, working professional uh, in the audit field, then it should be a bit more easy for you to understand as to what this paper is. But even if not, don't worry, because, you know, we uh, we do have uh, a really, uh, we have really gone in detail through each and every, uh, you know, syllabus areas through our video lectures as well. So don't worry about that. So uh, that's just a brief introduction as to what this paper is all about. Now. Moving on. <clears throat> so we will be looking at four things primarily. Uh, first of all, we'll be looking at as to what the audit and assurance syllabus 
uh, consists of the syllabus areas and stuff. And then we will be looking at the exam structure as to you know how exactly is the uh, uh, exam going to be tested for this particular paper. The time allocation, because that's also uh, quite important when it comes to the uh, AA paper. And finally, the how to prepare aspect as well as to how exactly should we prepare for this particular paper. And it's kind of applicable for other skill level papers as well skill level as well as, you know, uh, professional papers. So it's kind of a framework that, uh, you know, I recommend my students to follow so that they can, you know, easily clear the exam. <clears throat> so first of all, let's have a look at the syllabus, shall we? <clears throat> so when it comes to the syllabus, first of all, we have part A, which is audit framework and regulation. And this is where we learn about the basics of audit, that's what exactly is audit, what exactly is assurance engagement, etc. as well as there are a few regulations or in other words, laws and regulations in relation to this particular aspect as well. So we will be learning about uh, uh, those things within this particular syllabus area. Secondly, we have planning and risk assessment. And this is like, a, you know, the syllabus is like structured uh, kind of like the audit process itself. It starts from planning to execution to reporting, right? So that's basically how the syllabus is structured. So we will learn about planning in part B. And then there's something called internal controls, which is what we learn in part C. Then there's part D, which is uh, in relation to audit evidence. So uh, auditors gather something called audit evidence and how exactly is that done? What are the processes, et cetera? You'll all own all those things in this particular syllabus area. And then there are uh, ISA standards as well, like uh, in the FR paper, uh, like you have the IFR standards, accounting standards. We have auditing standards, that is ISA standards and ISQZ and some uh, you know uh, other standards like that within the audit paper as well. And of course, there's part E, which is review and reporting, which is the reporting phase of the audit. You'll learn about audit opinion and how exactly uh, can you issue an audit report and what are the things to consider by, uh, while issuing an auditor's report, all these things. And finally, there is part F. Part F is in relation to employability and technology skills. Now, this is a syllabus area that is common in all subjects, not just uh, AA, but also for the other subjects of ACC as well, other papers of ACC as well. So it's nothing but the technology skills that you need to have, the basic technology skills that you need to have to attempt the exam, such as, uh, you know, it's, it's primarily in relation to <clears throat> the uh, basic Excel and, you know, related aspects like that, like, uh, you need to have the basic knowledge of Excel and how to present your answer within a spreadsheet or how to present your answer within a word processor. That's basically, it's just the basic things. And, uh, you know, the basic knowledge about the CBE environment in which you will be writing the exam as well. And we will be we will be providing you with the training relating to these aspects. There are a lot of, you know, questions that we practice within the CBE pl platform, within the uh, revision bootcamp as well. So uh, you will definitely be, uh, you know, guided through all these syllabus areas as well as the basic stuff as well. Now, moving on to the next aspect. Do you guys have any questions up until now? <clears throat> I'll just wait a few, few minutes to, in the, uh, you can just shoot your questions in the chat box. I'll just wait a few minutes. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, NK, hi, right? Uh, uh, yes, okay. Nathan. Nathan, okay. Sir, uh, sir uh, I had written um, AA in September session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just want to know if there are any major changes in the syllabus in March, in the March session. I mean, sorry, June, June session. session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you see, Nathan, the changes relating to the uh, Audit and Action syllabus will take effect from uh, every September session. That's basically the uh, the duration in which a particular syllabus area is tested. For example, uh, you know, if if you have attempted the uh, September uh, 2022 session, uh, uh, I'm, I'm right about that, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. September if you have uh, if you have attempted that particular session, then there shouldn't be much changes for the January 2023 session. But if you are attempting the exam for September 2023, which is the next next session, then uh, I have reviewed the changes, but I don't think there's much changes. It's just that there are a few terminologies and stuff like that introduced. That's that's basically all the changes that uh, that there is. But there shouldn't be a, a, a that much of a major change uh, within the syllabus for the uh, upcoming setting. <clears throat> okay, thank you, sir. 
Okay, sure. Uh, any other questions? All right. Yes, Ashraya. Hi, Vishnu. Uh, yeah. I have a, like, I, I don't have a specific question related to uh, this, like, audit and insurance. Mm -hmm. But I have a question, like, can you please give some tips? Because syllabus is very large, you know, there are a mm -hmm. number of sessions, like 34 lectures we have to cover. Mm -hmm. So everybody has their own, you know, plans and strategies to prepare for the examination. So mm -hmm. uh, any tip you give like to us so that it could be easier for us because every uh, lectures have different calculations right. and graphs and it's not uh, always easy to remember each formula or each graphs at the mm -hmm. time of examination so i'll be appearing for june 2023 for pm mm -hmm. paper so i just, right. i have this question i want okay. to know from you and yeah, that is a that is a relevant question to uh definitely as well so guys uh a key thing that you have to understand while learning the syllabus is that we all understand that the syllabus is vast and there are a lot of things to learn, yes, but uh, through planning things in an efficient and effective manner, you should be able to grasp the syllabus in a bit more easier manner as well. For example, we are not expected to learn everything in a single day or in three days or something like that. So what we can do is we can just plan, like uh, let's let's learn one particular syllabus area one day and the next the next. But uh, and, and along with that, you can maybe make your own notes or your own, you know, uh, like memory aids or stuff like that because we, we do cover a lot of like uh, abbreviations and memory aids throughout our syllabus, be it uh, double or uh, PM as well. So uh, just just try to like remember it in an easy way. Try to understand the concepts because that's more important because, you know, when it comes to a practical exam like the ACC exam or a professional exam like the ACC exam, it's it's really important that you understand the concept rather than by hearting definitions and stuff like that, right? So try to understand the concept. If you have any sort of questions or anything like that, then feel free to reach out to me. I'm always available. And uh, since, since you have registered with the uh, course, I believe uh, you will be provided with the faculty's uh, contact number as well. So you can just contact me through WhatsApp. I will be, you know, uh, I will be able to like revert to your questions as soon as possible that way. That's one uh, one thing. And uh, moreover, uh, it's not about just learning st something or learning a particular topic and leaving it be, right? You should try to allot a certain amount of time on a daily basis till the day of your exam to revise through what you've learned as well. So taking time for revision, like learning something and then taking time for revision is like really crucial for you to understand these, uh, or it, it, it's it's really crucial for you to learn like 100% of the syllabus within the given time frame that we have. I will of course uh, go into a bit detail, uh, you know, into this particular aspect uh, later in the session as well. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. So, uh, you know, it's it's all about understanding concept and continuous revision. That's that's basically the primary thing. And of course, uh, as an additional tip, I would say, you know, it, it would be great if you guys could uh, you know, uh, it, I'll, I'll say something specific to the audit and assurance paper as well. It's a process, right? So trying trying to learn the, uh, you know, audit paper as a process itself kind of helps to understand the concepts as well. So, uh, of course, this is all covered within the video lectures as well. So uh, do have a look at that. <clears throat> as for the planning aspect as to how to do these things or how to, you know, uh, allocate the learnings, I'll, I'll definitely get to that in a while. <clears throat> I hope that answers your question, Shreya. Thanks, Vishnu. That answers my question. Okay, Thank you. Great. great. So moving on to the next aspect. One second. Exam structure. So what is the exam structure for audit and assurance? Let's have a look at that. So like every other skill level paper, it is a three-hour exam. However, uh, a slight change in the exam structure or the sections is that in section A, we have three OTQs or objective test questions, uh, where which is basically a scenario, a small scenario, and five MCQs relating to that scenario, right? So each OTQs will have five MCQs or in other words, 10 marks for each OTQs, right? So that's basically the idea here. And just like that, you have three OTQs in section A. That gives us a total of 30 marks, simple as that. And then we have section B. And within section B, you will have three questions. Okay, folks. So the first question is worth 30 marks. And all three are case studies, just to mention that. And we will have two other 20 mark questions as well. So 
130 marks and then 220 marks, which gives you a total of 70 marks are available in section B. And of course, yet again, even if I say case study, it's once again, I, I'm repeating the same sentence that I repeated a few a few minutes ago as well. It's not uh, definitions or it's not, uh, you know, simply generically stating the concept or something like that. It's more about, you know, dealing with that particular practical scenario as an auditor. That's basically how the nature of questions will look like when it comes to this, uh, you know, auditor and assurance paper. Moving on to, uh, that's basically all about the exam structure aspect. Uh, moving on to the next aspect, that is time allocation. So what exactly, or how exactly, since we already know as to how the exam would be tested, let's understand what exactly is the, uh, you know, time strategy that we need to use when it comes to this paper, shall we? Just gonna zoom it in, let me go. There we go, yeah. All right, so we have an ACC recommendation, uh, which usually says that you have to allocate 1.8 minutes per marks, right? However, uh, when it comes to the AA paper, there's a common, uh, common comment by students that, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it was really hard to complete the exam for some reason, right? Because it takes for, it takes time for us to think of what the answer is and then put it in the, you know, uh, response area as well, isn't it? So, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, time management is kind of an issue when it comes to the, uh, audit and assurance exam generically, which is why we need to have a time strategy to attempt this exam as well. So a conservative approach would be to take 1.5 minutes per mark and allocate the, uh, timings accordingly. So, you know, to give you a generic perspective, I would say that try to finish your section A by 45 minutes, right? Uh, within the first 45 minutes of your exam, try to finish the section A, the three OTQs. And for section B, we have 30 mark as well as a 25 mark, right? So I'm going to categorize the time for answering these questions into two sections, right? There's the reading and planning aspect, and then there's the writing aspect. And this is for every case study question, not just the, uh, you know, once in AA as well, right? So what you have to understand here is that we have 30 marks available. We have a 30 marks question uh, to be written in the exam. However, there is a considerable amount of time taken to read through the scenarios and understand what's happening in the scenarios or what is needed from the scenario, right? So which is why we're allocating some time to reading and planning. So what exactly do we do in reading and planning? Let's understand that. First of all, we read through the requirements as to what exactly is needed in that particular scenario or what exactly does the examiner expe expects us to write. And secondly, we read through the content, the, the scenario itself, right, as a whole, and try to understand what are the relevant points which we need to answer the requirement. Simple as that. And finally, we make a plan out of it. As to what are the points that I should include in my answer and, uh, you know, uh, like how, how should my answers be structured, etc. All these things are conducted within the first nine minutes of your 30 mark question. And the rest of the 45 minutes should be allocated to writing your answer, as simple as that. And of course, the, uh, you know, I do say nine minutes as like a generic, uh, you know, timing uh, applicable to all students, but some some people are like quick readers and some people are, uh, would be able to read things quickly and comprehend things quickly, then that's great. You can take less time and more, uh, allocate more time to writing as well. That's totally fine uh, if if you are able to do that. But yeah, in a generic sense, I would say let's, let's allocate nine minutes to reading and planning and then 45 minutes to writing your answer. Or in other words, I'll say, typing in your answer uh, in the CBE environment. And of course, there is the 20 mark question where, where we have a different uh, approach. So for the 20 mark question, for each of the 25, sorry, 20 mark questions that we have, we'll be allocating seven minutes to reading and planning, and then 30 minutes to writing the answer as well. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, the time allocation for section A and section B. So do you guys have any questions here <clears throat> regarding the exam structure or the time allocation? <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on then. So 
Uh, now that we've discussed the syllabus, exam structure, and time allocation, let's go ahead to how to prepare, shall we? <clears throat> so when it comes to the preparation aspect, it's like a step-by-step -step process, okay, folks? So let's, let's understand as to what step one is, first of all. Step one is learn the syllabus and revise continuously. As I mentioned earlier, it's not just relevant to learn like 100% of the syllabus, but it's also relevant that you continuously revise it so that you, go, you don't forget any of the concepts or even the small topics uh, which could be tested in the exam. Okay, folks, so that's basically the first step, of course. But there's something that's, I would say, equally or even more important than learning the syllabus. And that's basically step two, which is practice, practice, and practice. And by, by practice, I mean practicing questions. Okay, folks, practice as much questions as possible uh, for, a, for the particular paper that you're attempting. Uh, in this case, the origin assurance, just try to practice as many uh, case study questions, especially as possible, so that you can understand you know, where you're going wrong as to whether you can you know, complete the answer within the time allocated, et cetera. Okay, folks, that's basically uh, a really important step when it comes to this particular paper because, because it's a practical exam, isn't it? So if you, if you need to have the ability to understand what an auditor needs to, be, needs to do in a particular situation, you need to have some prior experience, isn't it? So you need, to, you need to gather that experience by practicing as many questions as possible throughout the various resources that is available to you. There is, of course, the resources provided by FinFran, the revision uh, bootcamp. We have a lot of questions, a lot, a lot of exam standard, as well as uh, <clears throat> past exam questions uh, practiced over there. And of course, there is also the uh, various exam kits or revision kits from, uh, you know, this is the authorized, uh, uh, you know, companies like Kaplan and BPP. And then there's also uh, the ACCA past exam questions available within the practice platform as well, which is the uh, next step as well. Okay, folks, so do the question papers or past papers available within the ACCA uh, exam, uh, exa sorry, ACCA website. That's basically step three. Now, uh, another thing that I would, uh, like to point out here is that when practicing questions, when I say practice, I don't mean like read through questions or anything. I mean, practice the questions uh, in a timed manner. As in, you know, we have just discussed as to what the time allocation is for the 30 marks as well as the 20 mark question, right? So while practicing questions, try to, try to you know, uh, try to use that time allocation and see if you can complete it within that particular, uh, see if you can, you, you are compatible with that particular time strategy. That's something that, you know, I would, I would highly advise that you do. And when I say, uh, you know, uh, practice the questions, I mean, write it down, not just read through. Okay, folks, that's another really important point because, you know, if you just read through all the answers, you may get the concepts, you may understand how to write and everything. But when, when it comes to actually writing it, what ha what's going to happen is, you know, uh, the time uh, would be a problem. That's basically the uh, consequence of doing that. So uh, I would highly, highly advise we are, we do have enough time to uh, practice a lot of questions. So uh, please do allocate time for that. Please do allocate time to uh, actually type in your answers and see, see if, you know, uh, see if you are writing everything correctly and see, uh, see if you, you are able to complete the answer within the allocated time as well. Okay, folks, that's something that I would advise. Okay, so uh, another question, BPP or Kaplan kit. Okay, so uh, I don't constrain students from, uh, you know, practicing, uh, you know, any of the exam kits, but it depends on your time availability as well. If you have time to do both, then you can do both. But, you know, I think both are fine because, you know, there are there is a variety of questions in both these exam kits. You can, you can definitely go for both if you have the time for it or else you can, you know, go for either one. Okay, folks, that's that's totally fine. <clears throat> uh, that's totally fine uh, because you know uh, both these uh, both the exam kits for this paper especially has a has a lot of it has a lot of variety of questions. So uh, you know uh, I, I I wouldn't I, I I can't really choose one specifically. So yeah, <clears throat> hope that answers your question. NK. Any other questions, guys? <clears throat> okay. 
NK, anything from your side? I mean, Nithin, sorry. Nithin, anything from your side? Oh, no, thanks for the... Okay, sure. Plan. All right, all right. So moving on to the next step. Step four, which is reading the examiner's report. So I'm not sure if you have uh, gone through this particular uh, resource, a very, very uh, resourceful resource, I would say. Uh, there, we do have the examiner's report for other papers as well. I'm not sure if you've gone through that, but it gives you an idea as to what exactly does the examiner expects. And that's really, really crucial when it comes to the audit and assurance paper as well. You need to understand as to what the examiner expects expects out of a requirement or what should you write in the exam and what you should not write in the exam. So the examiner's report is like a report provided by the examiner stating what the strong candidates in a particular exam setting has done, as well as what the poor candidates have done as well. So you should be able to differentiate as to what are the uh, you know good strategies that you need to adopt for the exam from this particular resource as well. So I would advise like while when practicing questions, practicing part, past paper questions, try to read the examiner's report in relation to that uh, so that you can get a better understanding as to where you went wrong and where you can improve as well. Okay, folks, that's another, uh, you know, uh, wonderful resource that we have available within the ACC's website. And of course, we do conduct like live sessions, uh, like weekly, weekly live sessions where we discuss and debrief some of these examiner's report as well. So that's uh, another... <clears throat> Uh, you know, I would say another thing that we do at uh, FinFam. Now, moving on to step five, and this is a really crucial step, uh, and it's really beneficial for you as well. It's 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 basically to do a mock exam. And at FinFam, we provide mock exams to our students with feedback as well, with tutor pre feedback as well, so that you can understand, you know, what are the areas of your improvement? What are the, or wh where exactly do you need to improve? And uh, you know, what are the further steps that you need to take to get a good score in the exam? That's that's basically uh, step five mock exam. And finally, we have step six, which is just to go write your exam. Okay, folks, so that's basically the uh, six step process, I would say to completely prepare for this particular uh, upcoming uh, June exam setting. Okay, folks, kind of applicable for all papers as well, but you know, it's like a framework that you can adopt. Okay, folks, so one, one really important thing that I'd like to convey here is that each and every step is really important. Okay, folks, if you miss out on one, then that there could be a problem. Okay, folks, because, you know, if let's say that uh, you have learned like 100% of the syllabus without skipping any topics, but you didn't practice as much questions, then what's going to happen is sometimes sometimes you may not get the right answer in the exam. That's a possibility. And secondly, there's a time related issue as well, isn't it? That's also, that can also happen. So each and every step is really crucial. And this is like the requirement. Okay, folks, this is a requirement that we need to meet in order to completely prepare for the upcoming exam. So keep this in mind. Any questions as of now? <clears throat> All right, moving on to the next aspect. So let's understand as to how to, uh, you know, prepare for your upcoming exam. Okay, folks, let's try to uh, understand how we can, you know, do that. For that, I'll need to share my screen into an Excel file. Is the Excel vis visible to you? <clears throat> Can anyone confirm? Nitin, Shreya? Not visible. Not visible. Okay, I'll just reshare my screen then. One second. <clears throat> I can see more students in the call. Anjali and... Okay, never mind. Keisha as well. Okay. All right. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat box. I'll definitely be taking that up. I see. It is visible now. All right, all right, great. <clears throat> All right, guys. So this is basically just a small timeline that I've, uh, you know, created just to uh, let you know as to what what exactly is the things that we need to do for the upcoming June session. Okay, folks. Now, uh, one second. Okay. 
All right. So June 5 is our, you know, exam day. And what we need to do is we need to think from our objective back to the present. Okay, folks, that's basically what we're about to uh, do here. Now, uh, we, al we already know as to what our objective is. Our, let's say, short-term objective, I don't know what your long-term objectives are, but feel free to share if you'd like to, you know, whether it's becoming an affiliate or a member or, you know, getting a promotion or something like that as well. But that's that's definitely the long-term ob objective. But, you know, to achieve that objective, we need to, uh, you know, pass this exam first, isn't it? So uh, our objective is to pass the exam on 5th of June. That's basically our objective, isn't it? And secondly, uh, okay. Uh, okay, Shreya, do you have any question? Uh, Vishnu, I have a question sure. that June 5th is examination for uh, this paper or, this paper, uh, or this paper. every day? This, this paper. paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's the exam day for uh, audit and assurance and advanced audit and assurance as well. So, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. okay. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm confused. Confused you there. So, uh, yeah, June five is basically the exam day for the uh, audit and assurance paper as well as advanced audit and assurance as well. But yeah, let's focus on double A for now. Uh, so this is basically the objective, isn't it? Let's. Uh, we need to pass the exam on this particular day. Now, in order to do that, what needs to be done during the time frame that we have left? Because we are standing on what? Uh, twenty. Are we standing on 20? No, 19th, right? Yeah. We are standing on 19th March. And from here, we have to plan as to what needs to be done for the next two months, isn't it? That's basically the idea here. So how should we plan this? We've already discussed what needs to be done, isn't it? We need to learn the syllabus. We need to practice questions, pass papers, mock exam, etc. So let's allocate the day. Let's create a plan or create a schedule for us to follow. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. So we need to plan it from the end, okay, folks? So from 4th to, let's say, uh, during this particular time, these are the, uh, this is like the final week for the exam. So I will allocate a considerable amount of time to, let's say, uh, practice past papers, as well as to uh, conduct a final revision for my exam day. Isn't it? That's basically something that I would do during uh, this particular week. Now, before that particular week, I need to allocate another week for practicing, let's say, the past paper questions alone. Okay, folks, just the past paper questions. And maybe on 20th or 19th, I may attempt a mock exam. Of course, that's not the official date, guys. I'll let you know as to when that would be. Uh, I'll conduct a mock exam. I'll write a mock exam uh, on, let's say, 20th or during this week and then get valuable feedback on it and then start practicing the past paper questions. And before that, what needs to be done? I need to allocate a considerable amount of time to practicing questions, isn't it? So since we have a lot of time left, I would uh, allocate, let's say, you know, these days, the entire days over here, just to practicing questions and revision if I'm only attempting one paper. And the remaining days will be taken to learn the entire syllabus. Okay, folks? And learning the syllabus would mean watching video lectures and asking the tutor questions if you, if you have any and stuff like that. Okay, folks? So this is how you should plan things. Okay, folks, try to plan things, uh, you know, uh, in an effective manner. And of course, I know that there it, this isn't a fixed schedule. It's 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 not applicable to everyone because some of you may have, let's say, work-related aspects, uh, work-related stuff to do, or uh, some of you may have, let's say, mm, uh, let's say personal commitments or family emergencies and stuff like that. So uncontrollable factors as well. So just, just provide some consideration to all these factors and then prepare a realistic plan. That's that's basically something that I would I would I would highly advise. Now, uh, any questions here? <clears throat> okay. Plan for working people spending nine hours to work. Okay. Uh okay. All right. Shreya, uh, you're a working professional. Nathan, what about you? No, I'm just a student. I'm not working yet. 
Okay, all right. So I'll I'll try to tell you a plan for both the working professionals as well as for full time students as well. Okay, folks. Now, uh, when it comes to uh learning, I'm not necessarily uh I wouldn't call myself to be a input oriented person as as in I wouldn't say uh, tell you guys to learn let's say for uh 10 hours a day or let's say 5 hours a day or, or on a particular paper or anything like that that's that's not necessarily my approach so uh i'm more of an output oriented person as to you know uh i value the output more than the inputs that you put in because uh for one individual it may take let's say uh 2 hours to learn a particular topic for the next individual it may take only 1 hour depending uh, to learn the same topic i i understand that particular uh difference in you guys as well so uh you know uh, I, I wouldn't say you know you have to you know learn for these many hours but for a working professional i would say that you know you need to allocate some time during a weekday as well as during the weekends right so how much would this hours be can you uh, give me an example like shreya how many how many hours can you allocate on a weekday to your studies <clears throat> so in a weekday uh, you know my uh, working hours from 11:30 in the morning till 8:30 in the night mm -hmm. so i come back by 9:30 and after you know dinner and all i allocate like one lecture i have to complete each day that's my you okay. know the target mm -hmm. so that if there is a 34 lectures so i can get it completed in a month or so even okay. if mm -hmm. even though if i skip on the weekends i can get right, it done right. like two mm -hmm. lectures on one day and a saturday and two on the sunday and oh, after okay. completing the 10 lectures then revision part should come for the uh, i 10. would uh, i would allocate some some more time as in you know uh, during a weekday it's fine if it's like one lectures i would try to target two because you could target two sometimes because you know there are a few lectures which are you know uh a bit shorter than expected some are big some are some are small so you know try you can definitely match that up that's that's totally fine uh during weekends i would target maybe three or four rather than just two key okay, folks that that's that's something that uh you know i would suggest <clears throat> now uh okay so that's that's all for learning and of course in, uh, for full time students you can maybe target a minimum bare minimum of four lectures per day right or maybe uh, yeah three to four I, I, i'm only going to give you uh, you know uh, that particular framework of course there are revisions as well as question practice and stuff like that you may also do along with it so uh, considering that and of course you may have your personal stuff to do as well so considering that uh, uh, a bare minimum of let's say four lectures per day for a full time student seems reasonable so yeah that's something that i would advise <clears throat> and uh what else yeah uh so that's basically the time that you should take to learn the syllabus and of course there are a few days that should be allocated so that you can you know learn on your own as well because even after watching the video lectures you may have to revise through the content again and you know learn the syllabus once again right i do understand that everyone needs to do that so uh if i let's say try to complete my lecture by uh let's say uh like eight or so then i may take another week to you know go through the syllabus on my own right so that's that's basically uh something to plan about as well and after this after this uh, there comes the practicing phase as well now this is a this is a really crucial part because we uh i don't have the exact number but uh we need to let's say try to complete let's say if if you have the enough you have enough time then you can definitely try to complete let's say two exam kits or even one exam kit for that matter so first of all what i want you to do is try to quantify how many questions you have and allocate the allocate the or proportionate those based on the number of days that you're allocating to practice okay folks that's something that i would uh, suggest that you do but on an average i would say uh for a working professional if i'm only taking if i'm only doing otqs then i would say you can target maybe uh 20 to 40 uh mcqs or in other words well if i'm talking about otqs alone maybe then uh let's say four to five otqs per day on a weekday and you know as much as possible during the weekends and uh if i'm taking case studies alone just the case study questions you could practice one per day during a weekday 
for working professional and during weekends as many, as much as possible but even even though i say as much as possible i do expect at least maybe uh you know uh five to six questions being practiced during the weekends so uh is that a good number or uh what do you guys think so shreya what do you think yeah i agree and uh, although although this weekend i have completed like four lectures now now i'm on the fourth lecture right now so awesome. i think uh, yeah yeah so i hope it uh, helps me <laughs> later definitely, in the month. definitely just try to plan things out that's that's really necessary i know that you know uh you know uh, sometimes we may not do the things that we plan there are a lot of you know uncontrollable factors that could come in or maybe it could even be our laziness as well but you know uh try to stick to the plan as much as possible and uh i i, I don't know whether you guys have noticed but uh, have you guys have any of you guys noticed the tab name yet this planning in consistency isn't it so it's not just about planning but consistently following the plan is also important that's basically why i just uh, you know given it a name like that so try to try to follow it as much as possible try to create a plan like uh, today itself right after the session and try to follow it as much as possible or to the extent uh, possible if something happens don't just you know uh, don't just uh, stop doing things from the next day just you know skip a particular day and revise the plan that's that's basically what needs to be done okay folks and uh nitin uh do you have any questions from your end uh no i'm fine okay all right all right and uh is uh will you be able to do like five to six questions like case study questions during you know the practice phase what do you think Yep, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would. Okay. I would be. All right. All right. Good to know. All right. Uh so I hope you understood how to plan for the exam and I hope you would, you know, create your own schedule right after this call as well and try to follow it uh, you know to the best extent possible because i know that there would be there's always something to something that can come up like a function or you know, like a family emergency or personal any other personal commitments for that matter but you know if 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 something like that happens try to revise the plan okay folks try to revise the plan uh, by still including things that's 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 basically something that i would uh, advise because if we do nothing there's no progress but we do if we do something then you know something is still progress right so that's basically the uh, idea here <clears throat> all right uh, so that's basically it for the planning aspect so do you guys have any questions any other questions general questions is also welcome in this call so uh, definitely feel free to ask Uh, which no, uh, there, uh, there is also a, you know, no, I think the Kalpan kit or there is a question. I, I had received the email from the mm -hmm. Fentram, uh, okay. like for the questions. I think that was a kit, which yeah. has approx like uh, five hundred questions. I guess there are five hundred questions related to PM paper, PM paper. which I'm. Okay. Yeah, which I'm preparing for right now. So mm -hmm. I had to practice practice all the five hundred questions because because I think it will take a lot of time. Like I mean, a month <laughs> it can take a month to prepare all the questions and go through that. Yeah, it should uh, you know you should go through that. I would say, and then you know five hundred is a huge number. I know, but you know we're not expecting to do the five hundred in a single day, right? And uh, yes. guys, uh, you know, since this is a call on audit and assurance as well, this is also applicable to uh, audit and assurance as well, because there are a lot of questions, 200, 400, even maybe even 500 as well. So, uh, you know, even though it may seem like a huge number, but uh, which is why I, I specifically told you guys to, uh, you know, partition it like we can't we can't like you know, uh, you know, carry a mountain on our own, right? So what we do is we just break it down into chunks and do it one by one, right? So just try to allocate it uh, in a manner, let's say if it's uh, MCQs, I'm strictly speaking from an MCQ perspective, not OTQs. Uh, and in OTQs, we have five MCQs, but yeah, let's, let's just call it MCQs as well. So uh, an average student could do, like a full-time student could do around uh, maybe 60 to 80 questions, 80 MCQs per day. Right, full-time student. Uh, 
for a working professional, yet again, during a weekday, you could target maybe, you know, 20 to 30 questions. And on a weekend, maybe you can target like 60 or so, right? And it's kind of easy if you think about it because MCQs doesn't necessarily take that much time. As in, you know, you you would be able to like try to attempt an MCQ and try to understand how it's done in let's say five to 10 minutes. That's basically it. And then you move on to the next one, right? So it's not that much of a, MCQs are not that much of a time consuming process, but case study questions, yes, that can be time consuming. I, I agree with you, but MCQs shouldn't take that much time and it can be done quickly. Okay, folks, uh, that's that's something that I would say. I hope that answers your question, Shreya. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Any other question, Nathan? Anything from your side? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. All right, guys. So yeah, that's all that I wanted to cover in this session. And uh, thank you for attending this and thank you for patient, patiently listening to it as well and for sharing your uh, inquiries as well. And of course, if you if you have any more questions, then, you know, feel free to, uh, for, for the people who have, uh, you know, joined my course, you can definitely reach out to me personally uh, with the contact number that was provided to you. Or you can, uh, you know, if not, you can definitely have a look at the, uh, you can contact uh, us through the phone number that is given in the slide over here. One second. <clears throat> And of course, uh, if you want to get more details about the course or something like that, feel free to visit the website fintram.com or email us at uh, support at fintram.com as well for any technical issues uh, for the other students as well. Okay, folks, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this session and I hope to see you in one of the other uh, live sessions as well. Thank right? you, Vishnu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.